These game activists can't seem to catch a break. I've talked about Rebecca Valentine a few times in the past. She's a writer for IGN who ran a complete slanderous hit piece against the makers of Black Myth Wukong, the studio of game science, saying that they're misogynistic and they're horrible people and this is some company that we shouldn't be supporting and here's why. She's been completely debunked by an actual Chinese gamer YouTuber that took piece by piece the article written by Rebecca Valentine and destroyed it completely. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. This video that was created by Fei Fi meticulously goes through the IGN article debunking everything that Rebecca Valentine was trying to say slanderous about the studio of Game Science. Is Game Science the perfect studio out there that everyone should try to be like? No, obviously not, but that's not what I'm trying to say. The remarks they've made were edgy. I mean, you could even go so far as to say they were rude, but they weren't sexist or misogynistic. And that is a huge distinction to be making in all of this. And if you think that's bad, it's only the beginning. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out SmashJT.com for the full exhaustive article going over with a fine tooth comb this incredible video by Fei Fi. There has been some commotion in the gaming community, especially due to issues involving IGN and Sweet Baby. I believe there will be more attempts to stir things up before and after Black Math Wukong's release. For some reason, there seems to be a group of people who don't want to see the game success. Sometimes cultural misunderstandings can spiral into full-blown controversies because of ignorant reporting or worse, on purpose trying to slander an organization for a reason. But potentially up to and including trying to make them look as bad as possible because the company Game Science refused to sign on the dotted line with a company like Sweet Baby Inc, a consultancy firm. And because of that, the nose ring mafia was out in full force to slander this company into the ground. And they thought, as in times past, it would work just like normal, but people are wising up to it. Developers entered the gaming industry around 2008 and in 2013, they developed a game called Dou Zhan Shen at the internet giant Tencent, which was also related to the journey to the West story. The IGN article written by Rebecca Valentine about Game Science's highly anticipated title, Black Myth Wukong, failed this basic standard of journalistic integrity. Shocker, I know, leading to potentially severe repercussions for the relatively young Chinese studio. Now, as pointed out in the video by Fei Fi here, this is not the first game made by Black Myth Wukong's creator, Game Science, but it is the first major title. Previous to this, there were a couple mobile games that they worked on, but this game is their baby, their biggest project to date, and it looks by all accounts to be incredible. The development team was just a reflection of the Chinese game development industry. However, I didn't think this was a problem because the female gamer community wasn't very large at the time. Both female developers and gamers were relatively few, with a male-to-female ratio of about 7-3. Even among the excellent games I mentioned earlier, there weren't many female players. I remember that female gamers only started to get attention around 2015. Thanks to Chinese YouTuber Fei Fi, we now have a clear understanding of just how wrong IGN got it. And boy, is this telling. Rebecca Valentine's hit piece took aim at game science, accusing them of being sexist and misogynistic based on clearly mistranslated and misinterpreted statements from the studio. This narrative was quickly amplified across Western media with many outlets eager to jump on the bandwagon without verifying any of the claims, without trying to do any research for themselves, without trying to see any of the info and facts and make sure they get it right. They all just reference IGN's hit piece saying, yeah, this studio is not one we can trust because they're a Chinese company and they're bad. Uh, if you don't believe me, look at what IGN said about them. Imagine if World of Warcraft introduced a new race that looked like Legolas and wore thick clothes, attracting many female players, and the male to female ratio shifted from 7 3 2 4 5 5. Then Blizzard would run an ad saying, we have the largest number of female players. Come and pick your real wife. It's unbelievable. I came to play the game, but I ended up being treated as a game asset. 
This happened to Chinese game industry and community. That article accused of saying we don't need female players was written in this contest. The developers weren't saying they didn't need female players, but that they didn't need to do things to pander to women and then treat them as a resource to attract men who wanted to date. What made this situation worse was that IGN's article was the only source cited by any of these other major outlets. It spread misinformation far and wide, and they all worked together to push the same false narrative. This is what I've been so frustrated about. Like from the get go, I saw it happening and I'm just like, here we go. You know, calling it from Jump Street, this is going to spiral out of control because IGN, as much as people want to say you can't spell ignorant without IGN, it is still somewhat respected in gaming culture. I mean, they're losing any respect by the second right now, but they still are one of the higher echelon media outlets out there that can be sourced. That's the problem when you have someone like Rebecca Valentine making an article without doing the due diligence and research and finding out, oh wait, this isn't translated properly. We need to make sure we get it right. But what I'm concerned about is she knew it was mistranslated and she ran with it because it fit her agenda. And the creator Feng Jin posted the famous Weibo that IGN criticized as sexist, particularly the first sentence, 想扩圈多招几个被舔到勃起不能, was translated by IGN as I wanted to expand my circle and hire more people, get leaks until I can't get an erection. My English isn't very good, so I don't know how native English speakers perceive this. But in Chinese, what he actually meant was, I just wanted to recruit a few people, but received more price than expected, which made me feel uneasy. Fifei is a Chinese YouTuber with a deep understanding of Chinese and Western gaming cultures. She dissected IGN's article perfectly, pointing out the translation used by Valentine was not only inaccurate, but also extremely damaging. The core issue was IGN's translator was not a native Chinese speaker, but Korean, a detail that may seem minor initially, but had significant implications as we see unfolding here. The nuances of Mandarin, especially when discussing culturally sensitive topics, are huge, and the mistranslation fundamentally altered the meaning of game science words. By running a hit piece without the proper verifications and confirmations from actual Chinese language speakers, IGN either knowingly attacked game science or honestly equally as bad, ignorantly blasted a company for clicks and clout. But I'm starting to think that none of this was done by accident. Due to creative differences with Tencent, they left and founded their own game company, Game Science. Before working on Black Math Wukong, they made two mobile games to survive, which I don't know much about, but during this period, they made some rather vulgar recruitment posters that reflected their usual style and it received a lot of criticism. The images referenced by IGN as being misogynistic or overly sexually or overt were from previous campaigns from years ago, but they try to make it sound like it's happening right now in their current recruiting practices, which honestly, they're vulgar. They're a little bit off the cuff. You know, they remind me a little bit. If you look at like 90s video game magazines, they were very raunchy and risque, especially the paid advertisements. I feel like these journalists that used to have their jobs paid by these advertisers were perfectly fine with it in America when it was happening back then because their bills were getting paid. But now it's not acceptable in America to be like that. So we need to point at other cultures and call all of them out as well because, because we don't do it here anymore. They can't can't do it there. Game Science's reputation took a huge hit, and the studio found itself unfairly maligned in the Western gaming community. What's most alarming is just how quickly other media outlets latched on to IGN's false narrative without conducting any of their own research. This kind of lazy journalism not only undermines the credibility of these outlets, but it also harms the very studios they claim to cover objectively. Like, how are we supposed to trust anyone if if they have an agenda that they set out to target, making sure that they hit that target with everything that they say. I guess it kind of explains why YouTubers are eating their
their lunch. And a huge shout out to Grums for bringing attention to the situation. On Twitter, he wrote, Chinese YouTuber Fei Fi explains where Rebecca Valentine's IGN post got it 100% wrong in their hit piece article on Black Myth Wukong and game science. Edgy and rude, yes. Sexist and misogynistic, no. Rebecca got this so wrong and it has caused so much harm to game science's reputation that she needs to be accountable and retract the article. IGN got the translation wrong because their translator was not native. He was Korean. And because, of course, IGN has an agenda. Unfortunately, this article was picked up as fact by other Western media outlets that were eager to smear the studio. The IGN article is the only source they cite, yet you see it everywhere. And I agree with that. Everything I've been covering, every time someone tries to slander this, it always goes back to this false accusation IGN article. While this YouTuber does not agree with how Game Science says things, she clearly lays out where IGN got it wrong. But I would never bring such behavior to work or formal occasions, nor would I include it in videos. That's a sense of boundaries and respect for others. Otherwise, like them now, while you're gaining high attention, their low quality behavior also gets like a defect, even causing people to accuse them of being sexist. And I completely agree with that wholeheartedly. Rebecca and IGN not only need to retract their article, but they need to issue a full mea culpa, apology, we are sorry, we got this so wrong, and we have to make amends for it. Of course, we'd probably see pigs fly before that happened because that's not what these journalists do because they're activists. They have agendas that they're trying to push and it's being exposed for all to see right here. However, I wanted to clarify that just because I understand what he was trying to say doesn't mean I approve of his way of saying it. Again, you can call him rude and uh, crude but uh, there's no need to label him as sexist. It's impossible to ignore the broader context here too. IGN's agenda, whether intentional or not, is crystal clear in how they handled the story. The rush to label game science as sexist fits a broader pattern in Western media where certain narratives are pushed without the actual evidence to support it. All they have is an agenda and it all goes back to companies like Sweet Baby Inc and other consultancy firms that work and are in cahoots with all these backroom deals with these so-called journalists to make sure they scratch my back, I scratch their back. They take care of each other because of financial gains. The fact that IGN relied on a non-native translator raises questions about their commitment to accuracy in the first place, especially when covering a high-profile game like Black Myth Wukong. Instead of just admitting they were wrong and moving on, they instead double down and get angry at YouTubers for calling their ass is out like this could be so much easier instead of you know attacking people that are just trying to hold you accountable maybe <laughs> crazy idea here hold yourself accountable hold yourself to some standards that are higher than whatever the hell this is i look at Fafi's video as something that is extremely trustworthy not just because she's talking from a perspective of knowing what the hell she's talking about but because she doesn't fully defend game science she takes the approach of their communication could have been better and that they need to be more aware of how their words could be received internationally. But she draws a clear line between being impolite and being sexist. Like, she is just real. She's saying this is actually what it means and this is what IGN took it for to make them sound as bad as possible. In an industry where the reputation of a studio could make or break its success in the long term, stuff like this really pisses me off and I think that kind of comes through in these videos. I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of it. I would like to see some journalistic integrity brought back to the video game industry and the only people that seem to be able to do that these days are YouTubers, which again is exactly why these journalists keep getting laid off. They have zero integrity. They have zero accountability. They will not admit when they're wrong and they will not do the right research to make sure they get the story right. They have agendas they aim to hit and if they don't hit them, they will stand their ground and double and triple down. And unfortunately, 
That's the situation that the game industry is in today. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. If you guys want more information or links to the video, all the stuff that I talked about in this video, please check out smashjt.com. I will link this in the description below. If you appreciate what I'm doing, please consider hitting that join button. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. The backlash against them on the Chinese internet actually started at this point of the first video came out and wasn't anything new. Their inappropriate remarks from before were dug up and why to separate at this time. Smash,